about today specifically is tariffs. Big in the news, we're hearing a lot that's happening. We're entering into an era of trying to get an understanding of international trade. And the big topic right now deals specifically with tariffs. Now, while I'm not going to get into the political aspects of it, I want to take a minute to look at what an economist has to say about how tariffs work. And then we can then have a more informed discussion when we start talking about what it means when we start to implement tariffs on different countries and the implications associated with it. Now, to do that, we're going to use our board here and we're going to look at a particular market. And you know how markets work. Markets look where we have the quantity and we have the price. And tariffs are enacted on a particular market, a particular good, whether it's spirits from the EU, whether it's agricultural products from Mexico, whether it's lumber from Canada. It's a particular market that gets hit with a tariff. Now, let us start at the beginning, where we have a regular market. We won't specify a particular good. We're going to look at it generally. And here is the demand. And here's the supply. They're very used to how markets work. And look, and this is the regular equilibrium. And let us pretend that we're starting at a place where this particular country is not trading with anybody. It's, you know, being isolated and doing its own thing. So this is the domestic demand, the demand in the particular country. This is the domestic supply, the supply from the producers in the country. And we know our concept of equilibrium looks like this. Let's start there, okay? No trade, regular market, supply and demand, equilibrium. Let us now impose or put in place where this country now starts to engage in trade, meaning you have suppliers on the world market also providing this good. So we're expanding the particular market to include international trade. So when you have competition, then you open the market and the domestic price now will fall. Why? Because now you have choice. Now you have more suppliers. Now you have competition. So the idea is when you open to trade, let's put it in blue, the price. Now we as consumers see a wide array of the same good from different suppliers in different countries and it drives down the price in the domestic market. Let's call it PW. Think of it as when it is the case that trade opens up, we now have a drop in the price of the good on the domestic market because now we have world trade opening up, dropping the price. Well, let's take a look at this. Put on the econ hat. When prices are lower, now we're open to trade. Will consumers buy more or will they buy less of the good? Now, they used to have PE when it was isolated, open to trade, prices are lower, we're going to buy more, okay? And the more, think of it as this is our demand and this is now the new lower price, we're going to demand more of this good. Let's call it QDW for the world. Now, when the price is lower, think of it from the domestic suppliers. What's going on with them? Well, they now face competition and the price they can fetch is now lower. So, are they going to want to make, produce and sell more of that good or less of it? It's going to be less, okay? And if you want to think of what this is the world price, 
This is now what the domestic suppliers are willing to supply. Let's call it W so we know it's because it's open to trade. So if we are demanding this, and the local market, the domestic market is only supplying this, how do we get what we want? Well, it's open to trade. Now we can buy on the international market. So if we want this, and they only want to give us that, what do we do? We start importing. So if we want this, and they're only giving us that, the difference, I'm going to just put a little shade here. Let's just put this. Is what we start to import. We want it. It's cheaper on the global market. And they're only willing to give us this, but we want this. So we import the difference given by here. With me so far? So we're importing. Let's say the government comes in and they say, we don't like this. We're importing too much. For whatever reason in this particular market, they say, we now want to put a tariff on that good. And this is where things get very confusing when I watch the news. A tariff is a change in the price. It's a per price change. And things get very confusing about who pays the tariff, what is happening to the tariff. Let's just break it down here. When a tariff is imposed, essentially what's happening is this price that we normally face, this P-word price, the government has put a tax on, and now this price, the P-word price, is now going to be higher. And let's put it here. Let me put it right here. I'll call it the P-word, but now it has a tariff with a T. The P-word plus the tariff. Now it has a T. Okay? So, world price open to trade, government puts tariff in place, the prices are now higher. Now, remember what we were saying before. Before, when we opened the trade, we were importing this area. When you put the tariff in place, I want you to look and you see what's happening. We're importing less. Now, this red shaded instead of the blue shaded. And again, this is where things get confusing because a lot of times people stop the analysis there. In fact, let's do this. Let's bring down some of this. This is the QD but with the tariff. And this is the QS but with the tariff. So people say, yeah, it worked. If our aim was to lower imports, now we are, instead of the blue, now we're doing the red. In economic theory, we cannot stop there. Because if you think about it, we have essentially raised prices. So, so with this new price, with the tariff, somebody is gaining and somebody is losing. Okay? So we have to analyze this in its totality. Now here is where the economic analysis comes in. When we had the world price, consumers got a particular gain known as the consumer surplus. In fact, we can trace it. I'm going to trace it in blue. Everything above the price line and below the demand curve. I'm going to show you the triangle so you can see it. Let me trace it in blue. This. This was what the consumers were gaining. With the global trade. This triangle that I'm shading blue. So this is what was done as the consumer surplus. I want you to look what happens. And it shouldn't be puzzling. If you raise prices on consumers... They have lost, okay? And what they have lost is known as the change in price changes the consumer surplus. So with the new price being higher, notice the triangle looks a little different. Let's go here. And now it's here. So instead of the blue triangle, when we raise up the price, 
the triangle gets smaller. So we used to have the blue triangle, but now we have the red triangle. In fact, to make it a little bit easier, let me do this. Let me label some of these areas. Let's do some letters, you know, because we have a lot of shapes going on here. A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. Let's do that. Okay? And let's get an understanding of what's going on. Who is gaining? Who is losing? What's happening? Now, blue triangle becomes red triangle, which means the consumers have lost. These consumers have dropped something. By raising the price, consumers in the domestic economy have lost their triangle. They have lost pieces of their consumer surplus. And in fact, we can take a look to get a sense of what exactly they have lost. They used to have the blue triangle, and now they have the red triangle. You see? They used to have the blue triangle, and now all they have is the red triangle. So think of it this way. The consumers, let me put it over here. They have lost. It's kind of this area here. Okay? They used to have the blue triangle. No, they have the red. So they have lost C. They have lost D. They have lost E. And they have lost F. That's the consumers. Okay? But the consumers have lost that area. That's the loss in their consumer surplus. Now, stay with me here. Think of it this way. If the price has changed and the consumer lost something, somebody must have picked it up, right? Somebody must have gotten it, if it is the case that it's lost. But if you're thinking in your mind, prices went up and the consumer lost it, who got it? Well, let's think of the most obvious piece. A tariff is a tax. It's a price increase and it's a tax. So if it's a tax, okay, who gets or gains from taxes? Who gets revenue? Ding, 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 the government. So because this price is now higher, the government has gained tax revenue. And if we're trying to figure out how much tax revenue, if you're going all of what the consumer loss went to the government, no, 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 no. Remember, we used to import this. Now we're importing this, okay? And the shrinking that import is because they put a tariff on us. Or sorry, they put a tariff on the particular good, a tax on the good, raising the price on us. Which means what is being imported, this little area that's no red, by the change in price, is what the government is getting as tax revenue. So they're getting imports times the change in price. They are getting the E. They get this little box as revenue. You see it? This change in price and this is the imports. That's their revenue. If you're looking, I'm going, that looks a little weird because the consumer lost way more and the government picked up a piece of it. Who else would have gained? If prices went up, who else would have gained? The domestic suppliers. They would be laughing to the bank, right? They're like, prices are higher on imports. No, you got to buy some of my stuff, okay? So... Part of how we measure what suppliers gain, you know, earlier we had the consumer surplus, you also have a producer surplus. And the producer surplus is this area that sits under the price line and is bordered by the supply curve. Another little triangle. So before, here is what they were getting. This is a triangle is what the producers were getting when we opened to trade. 
they got that triangle. When they impose the tariff, now look at what the producer is getting. Now they started getting this because it's a new price, right? You see it? So they used to get this triangle. When the tariff went in place, they started getting this bigger triangle. So the producers picked up something too. The sellers, the domestic sellers, not the international ones, the ones locally, they get to see. You see it? They used to get this, now they get that. Now if you're going, wait a minute, it still doesn't look right. Here is where tariffs, I will admit as an economist, alarming. We see the consumers losing. They lost C, but the producers got it. They lost E, but the government got it. But there's still two other losses kind of sitting there. You see ya? This. This D. And this. This F. If you're going, KC, please tell me somebody picked that up, Prof C, Blackboard Economist. Please tell me that there is an entity that picks that up. I have bad news for you. No. These are what's known as the dead weight loss. They are just gone. The D and the F. Because of the inefficiency of imposing this tax on imports because opening to global trade provided certain benefits to consumers and by interfering with that, even though there were some gains to be had, the government got revenue but it's just this little square, the we shifted some of the the, the gains to the consumers and push them to the supplier, maybe from a policy perspective that works, but it happened. But these are the two pieces that we lost because you have enabled an inefficiency. They are just dead weight losses to society. We just pay the price and they are lost because you have purposefully imposed an intervention in the market that is not efficient and takes from the consumer and leads to a less than optimal outcome. Now, whatever the objectives are in terms of, well, we got the E and I'm happy, or yes, producers got the C and we're happy. The point is, from an economic perspective, these two triangles are dead with loss, and not efficient outcomes. The tariffs or taxes, if you want to get a sense from an economic perspective, this is one way to kind of look at it. I hope this was useful. I hope the economic analysis gives you some sort of analytical framework when we're talking about tariffs. And we can have a discussion that's a little bit more balanced when we look at things from an economic perspective. That's it for now. You take care. Bye.